Uno was shot in the hind and the face, blinding him. Uno, the endangered Florida panther, but... It's something that really caught my attention. The story of Uno. And big cats in Florida? Like any good story, this one has some twists and turns. And some surprises. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy... Here in Florida, the word panther triggers many emotions. Oh my god, stop. That's a really cute picture. It's a baby. I think it's part of it. The future. This one is pretty easy. Everyone loves a kitten. But opinions can get very heated. If there was one word or phrase that springs into your mind when I say Florida Panther, what is it? Big kick. Resilient. Endangered. <laughs> Overprotection. Yeah. Wilderness. I personally think hockey. Conservation. I love them being here, but there's getting to be too many of them. But what's the reality? I wanted to find out more. I'm Chris Morgan. I'm an ecologist and filmmaker. I've spent my life studying and understanding bears and other carnivores, and what people need to keep them around. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Chris Morgan. Chris. It feels so unusual to be here. It's not like any cat habitat I've been in in North America before, so it's just got this really magical, tropical element to it. And every step I take, I'm picturing a panther deep in the brush. This is one of the most amazing, magical places that I've ever been. I've just walked into this cypress dome in the Florida swamps, and it's right in the middle of panther country. The panther could have been lost, and they were on their way out. And what makes them unique is that they held on. This is one resourceful cat. They were once found from the southern tip of the Florida peninsula, north to states as far away as Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and even South Carolina. Today, they are left in only 5% of that historic range. In the 90s, there were just a handful left, maybe as few as 20. It is the only population of puma east of the Mississippi River. Here at Big Cypress, we have the largest acreage of habitat for the Florida panther in all of South Florida, 729,000 acres that panthers call their home. Well, and I've often thought if someone went in a gallery and started destroying the works of the old masters and the old painters, people would be outraged. Mm -hmm. But yet we have a natural creation here that we don't want to lose, we shouldn't lose. Because mm -hmm. if we do as a society and a culture, I think we lose. Uno was just one cat who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Every cat faces challenges. But over time, and with a little help, the panther population started to grow in number again. This time into a very busy world of highways, golf courses, ranches, and developments. More of their habitat is being lost, but especially it's being fragmented. You know, it's really easy to want more panthers in Florida when you live in Naples or Miami, but what's it like when you live right in the middle of panther country, especially when you've got livestock to protect? Running a farm and living by myself, it's a little unnerving sometimes. So when you have livestock that's killed by a panther, mm -hmm. is it possible to get compensation? Yes, you have to prove that it is a panther. I don't think that that species needs to be exterminated completely, but I think that we need to reevaluate and take a better count. How many cats do you think there are around? Way more than they think. Do you think there is a future for the Florida panther here in, in Florida? I'm kind of like in the middle. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. Yes. 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 I hope so. Any animal that's indigenous to the area belongs there. But that's more complicated than it sounds, especially when hungry panthers eat people's chickens and goats. It's very easy to preach to the choir to save the panther, but what is more important is to, to walk a mile in somebody else's boots and to understand their perceptions, their fears, and their values relative to the panther. I'm gonna go and visit a rancher now who's part of a family that's been here for three generations of ranching in Florida. And uh, maybe I'll even get to jump on a horse. <laughs> ranchers that I speak with feel that they are stewards of the land and the panther is part of that landscape. But it's the balance that we're concerned about. That it's not like we're against panthers or we don't like having panthers. Yeah. We just don't want panthers eating our calves.
Panther recovery will not be successful unless the agencies responsible for that recovery have the trust of those private landowners and stakeholders that are most impacted by the Panther. It's really interesting figuring out how people are living with Panthers here in Florida today, but what about those people who've lived with them for thousands of years? I'm just heading to the Seminole tribe to talk to a tribal member there about their relationship with the Panther. We pay a lot of respects to all of our animals, but more so the, the Panther because of its elusiveness. You hardly ever get a chance to see one up close, so we need to take care of our animals so they can take care of us and we can live in harmony. And there is a lot of hope. For the first time since the early 1970s, a female panther and kittens have been spotted north of the Caloosahatchee River, meaning their range is expanding. As far as panther conservation, this is a success story in the making. We just need to continue to push forward. But unlike the publicly owned parks in the south, much of the land up north is owned by ranchers. Ranchers can be the real champions of this story. So much of the panther's future is in their hands. It's all about balance. How do we balance the animal, the people, with the rancher? So everybody lives happily. These cats are so elusive. This might be my only chance to see a panther in the flesh uh, at Naples Zoo. And it's also a place that takes panther conservation really seriously. And it's not just about the panthers for these people. It's about people as well. And moments like this, when I finally come face to face with Uno, blinded by a shotgun blast to the face. It's just really moving, actually, thinking about how he has become this ambassador for this entire species in Florida, and that people flock to this place to see him. They say that he's almost like an animal that knows it's been rescued, and he's grateful for it. How incredible is that? And who is this on your shirt? Mm. What do you think of Uno? I like it. I'm on the beach in Naples and it's just beautiful. And it's hard to believe that half an hour drive that way, I'm in Florida panther habitat. And no matter where I've been in Florida, a place that I've fallen for, I knew I was gonna be interested and intrigued by the panthers themselves, but Florida and the people here have been wonderful and warm and welcoming. And everybody seems to have a different opinion about panthers, but I think we can all meet in the middle and there's some really good common ground and panthers can bring us to that common ground because what is good for the panther is good for all of us. I'm with the people of Florida. I think the panthers belong here and there's a future for them if we're all smart, careful and understanding. It may take decades, but it seems like a future worth thinking about. A place where this iconic symbol of America can thrive among the people of Florida in an open and balanced way. And perhaps share a story of tolerance and pride for the whole world to learn from.